All right, guys, so now we got the B pillar right here. So we've got the A pillar, the B pillar. We saw what happened when we struck the uh, A pillar. Now we're gonna see what happens when we actually hit this wider, much wider, B pillar. And we're trying to go through to the other side to hit our bad guy. Uh, our brown guy, our, uh, our brown piece of target, brown guy, he uh, had some wounds to sustain from him from the 7.62. Uh, we mark those and essentially what we're doing, we're going to test different points of here, but I'm going to test like this area for the nine mil, um, this area for the two, two, three, five, five, six, you know, different areas. It's, we got lots of stuff going on here. We'll talk about that here in a second. All right, guys. So we're going to go B pillar to B pillar with the SIG 226, nine mil, 115. Weapon safe. Pull the sucker off. So here's our impact. And much like you'd expect, there's no exit. Okay. So I guess here's the rule of thumb. Um, nine millers are not making it straight way through pillars. So we have to kind of see what it will take to even port through one of these things. So safe. Same, sit the same hole. Caught some of the weather stripping. And notice, there's nothing that's going on. See that? Three and four bullets through that same hole. And see uh, if we can't get some penetration. There we go. So, Right there, it looks like it took that many shots, but essentially what happened was we had a round go through, deflect off in some way, shape, or form, and then hit the window. And if you look at where it hit and struck the window, right? Now on this side, what would you expect to see? Um, you're not seeing any damage to the exit are the uh, exit holes. There's only one of them out of all those shots we took with that nine mil. Isn't that interesting? But it did deflect off, and I know my guy is still safe though. He's got no holes that he didn't already have in them. I poured through this thing with a nine mil, and it's only coming up into the actual thing. It's just hitting right here. It's just hitting right there and not going through anything. It looks like it skipped off of that, the, the weathering right there, but that's it. So just letting you all see through our little guy, we only have two new little holes and they're not anywhere near center mass where we're, where we have it lined up, see? Now, sincerely, we could sit here and, and shoot as much as we could to see how much uh, a bullet would port through this, but we've already fired some, I don't know how many shots, we can go back and count them, through the B pillar, trying to reach the other B pillar. We can't even reach the other B pillar. It's being deflected, it's going someplace else that's not in line with the target, and that's not in any danger of the target. So, not only do we have to go through the B pillar, but you may have to go through you know, the actual seat, which we'll see here in a little bit, and um, go through the other B pillar for it to even be lethal to the guy on the other side. Now, uh, probability speaking, you know, it's just, uh, you can get a freak shot, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure there's this, these results can be wildly inconsistent depending on the vehicle that you use, but this is a newer model and this is interesting. All right guys, we got the Beretta 1301 Tactical with an out slug in there, two and three quarters out slug. We're gonna go B pillar to B pillar. I'm gonna try to go right about here, okay? Gosh, that's so much fun. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. So we had that massive entrance and it blew off this thing. As you notice, there's no penetration. <laughs> there's nothing that's going through. And that's amazing. We just have the stuff earlier from the nine mil that we ported, 
But if we shot right under the nine mil and it just didn't want to go through, that's a slug. With the double lot buck, we're gonna put it right here. And then what we're gonna try to do <coughs> is put double lot buck through the slug hole that we've already made. So here we go. Weapon safe. And nope, it's just getting caught up in all this. It's gotta go through the door. Then it's gotta go through the pillar. <coughs> this is a lot of stuff that's going on. And there's not any penetration. And that's just fascinating to me. <laughs> Nothing's happening over here. We're not even to this B pillar yet, guys. Look at this. There we go. I, yep, looks like we hit the window on the other side. That's what I heard, at least. Sell some shards. So we came out now, got some penetration, but it's all kind of like down there at the bottom there. Not a lot of stuff going on. It's fascinating. Oh, we can see through to the other side now. But it looks like it's hitting the, the belt, seat belt thing. And so that's just one of those factors. Had that seatbelt thing not be here, it probably would have reached this other B pillar, but it didn't. Okay, so we shot this B pillar. Now, let me explain some things about what else is going on here. From the door of the back door, we have this very thick steel looking thing, plate, that mount, mounting bracket, I guess, that holds up the door, uh, the back uh, driver's side door. Now, I've seen, uh, William Petty shoot through just this with the 223. Maybe putting a couple of rounds through here. And then I've seen instructors like Aaron Baruga, a uh, gorilla approach dude, who just ports through this, right? So he doesn't shoot this, doesn't take this into account. Uh, that's just, just videos I've seen. It's not, I've not been a part of one of his classes. Then you got like Johnny Primo, a lot of guys that just shoot through this right here um, from what I've seen. Now, <clears throat> I want to explain something. There's a lot of extra material right here. So to try to punch through this, this, this door, this, this, and this, all of what's going on to reach the other end of the B pillar, you're not going to have very much success probably. We're going to show you that, but we're also going to shoot the 223 in around this area and show you what happens when it hits something that doesn't have a lot of resistance behind it, like this, uh, these bolts down here, or these uh, brackets down here. We're going to put, uh, one shot right through here, pillar to pillar, try to reach our other target. It's safe. And this is where we impacted. Looks like it exited right there but I don't really see where else it went. So we're gonna go check. I don't see any exit wounds, do you? No exits. My bad guy doesn't have any more holes in him than what he came in with. All right, let's try it again, shall we? Same little spot right in that area. Do another one. Do another one. So we've done three weapon safe. One, two, three, right? Let's see what's going on here. We've got them going through, it looks like. Yeah. Right. Where are they going? They're going over there. Sorry for the lighting, it sucks. We're striking and we're reaching this. Looks like we have something that's trying to come through this while they're stripping. Or maybe that was from the nine mil before. That's not going through. It's not going through this second pillar just yet, guys. We're gonna keep this door open, keep trying. We're gonna shoot in relatively the same spot. 
relatively the same spot we were shooting before, trying to pour it from one end to the other. Let's see what we're doing now. Weapon safe. So we're just trying to <coughs> create a hole, our path of least resistance, and we're going through. Ripping it up, bro. Looks like we nailed that sucker right off, pulled it right off. And now we're going through, we're reaching at least this B pillar, right? So let's see what's happening. Sorry for the poor cameraing. I just want you to see unedited what's going on. We're reaching it, but we're not even beginning to penetrate through it, guys. It's nothing. And of course, our target over here has no more holes than what he came in with. Everything's been marked with silver Sharpie. It's fascinating. All right, you got some more bullets? Let's do it. Oh, we've hit the back. So much for going window to window in our experiments. Sorry, I should have foreseen that. We're going through the same area right here and we're starting to see some smoke on the other side. We know we've impacted this window, right? Which is a sad story, wondering where it's impacting. But if you notice, we're just now starting to get through, right? We're just now starting to punch through, but there's no holes. Where did all the holes go? Well, they're not going through the target. And that's just, you know, it's just fascinating to me that a car can do this. All right, so I think we can safely say that just regular full metal jacket, 55 grain, 556, is not doing a superb job <clears throat> punching its way just through the B pillar. We're not even talking about these mounting steel brackets that uh, hold the doors open. We're not even talking about this area, which if you're knelt, knelt down, right, right in this area, this lines with the heart, this one lines with more like a groin. And of course it's different from all different vehicles <coughs> and the sizes and everything. But yeah, this area of course would obviously be in line with your head, so that would be fatal and whatnot. Um, <coughs> but this is still an extra layer of protection that the vehicle's offering that we're not even tapping into. And that's not even taking into account the second one that we have over here for B pillar. So that's fantastic, that's fascinating. <coughs> in uh, class with Will Petty, I watched them load up, I think it was like 150, 223, uh, or no, 556, 62 grain uh, green tips, trying to just punch through this and that over there. And it took them like 120 rounds, it was fascinating. So I was blown away with that. Uh, but we, I don't re recall him shooting through this pillar uh, that much with a 556 um, or, you know, those different types of things. So obviously bullet is, you know, the type of bullet you shoot at is gonna matter a lot. So we're gonna shoot through it with the AK now and we're gonna try to hit right in this area right here. So B pillar to B pillar, done safe. Let's see what's up. There's our entry. I don't know if we have an exit from it. We can always go and check. We're not really seeing anything. Nothing over here, nothing on our target. Same hole, try to. A little low. Let's do three right there. Now if you notice, we're not to this point. We're just right here. <coughs> it's looking like it's doing some type of penetration. Yep, looks like it's doing some type. And we've got some smoke coming out right there. But we're not seeing any penetration. Remember, this is still our 9mm, right? <clears throat> That's still our 9mm little spot right there. But, you know, keeping it level and everything with everything, it's not going through anything over here. And therefore, oh, oh, we have a little spot. 
right here. Okay, that's a big spot. Now, what it looks like, to be honest, it doesn't look like a bullet wound, does it? Looks like just a debris wound. So it looks like that it ripped through that other side, maybe skipped or glimpsed off of this. And essentially did that deal right there, you know? Maybe that's what happened. But we can see that even just going B pillar, B pillar, we're not having any holes, extra holes. What's it gonna take to punch through this thing? I don't know. Do a couple more times. Bet you we got through on those. Those are the holes we're creating. We got a lot, some, a lot of smoke on that second B pillar. Let's me know the bullets at least come into contact with that. And I'm seeing the deformation of the jacket, but I'm not seeing any holes through this second pillar. Ah, here we go. But even then we can't be sure if they're from our nine mil or not, because I didn't open the door from our nine mil. But there, there's no holes <coughs> through this second B pillar. This is really like the last test um, that I want to do. Let's see if we can just pour it through this sucker. So we're starting to impact the, the vehicle now over there on the left. But just lining everything up, we've got smoke that's coming out. So let's go see what's happening. Ah, this is what we got to see. Stuff like this. We've got to see stuff like this. So uh, look at how many shots we had to put through that in order to just start out. Oh, here was another one. Look how many shots we had to start putting through the sucker just to get it to go from B pillar to B pillar uh, in the same hole, in the same entry hole, because it's got to go through, you know, the, uh, the passenger and driver's uh, seat and this right here. So, we're seeing some more holes, but this one, it's just hard to tell. You know, there's a lot of debris and shrapnel, but it's hard to tell what's actual, you know, uh, a bullet that's got any kind of deadly anything behind it. And, and that was with the doors open too, right? <laughs> you know, uh, think about shutting these doors and having these doors shut. I mean, we see this right here, but all this, like, could it go through? Probably, but it would take a little while. Now guys, just for kicks and giggles, we're gonna put some 223 and um, 762 right through that um, bracket right there. I'm just taking some, some light spalding that's not really going into my skin or anything like that, but let's just be say I'm thankful that I have iPro on. We're hitting it. Right. There's no going through it for sure. Nothing that's going through that. It's not even punching all the way, it's just hitting and being duck. So this just look at this. So imagine I have to go through this, this, or maybe even a second one over here before you even begin to reach and become deadly to that target on the other side of there. Think he's gonna stay there? Well, he may, but let's do some 5.56 from a greater distance away. We shot low on one. Right. We got one or maybe a couple that hit and penetrated through. But notice, ooh, let's see what's going on over here. <clears throat> but the bullet's losing all sorts of integrity. We're not coming through this other side, guys. Bullet's losing all sorts of integrity, and, and is it really gonna be lethal?
there's tons of practical application to be drawn from this. But primarily, I, I just kind of want to let you kind of see what's happening because I've done this same thing to six cars already of different makes and different models, uh, demoing them for uh, police officers who care to see it, demoing them for civilians of, of you know, just friends who had cars and wanted to shoot them up, things like that. And I, the more you shoot cars, the more, uh, more, more cars you shoot, the more uh, consistencies you find with what will happen when a bullet impacts a vehicle. Um, so if you've never taken a uh, vehicle class with uh, William Petty or uh, Steve Fisher or uh, Aaron Baruga or Johnny Primo or you know, all these guys out there, I know uh, Pat McManera does them. There's lots of guys out there that do them, Travis Haley and Chris Costa. There's, I could go on and on of all the guys that do classes like this, and I'm sure they have far more experience and can share with you more practical application for these things. Um, but I just kind of wanted to show you just kind of from a standpoint of, hey, let's just put some bullets through cars, what happens when they actually hit. So um, forgive me if I am kind of inferring anything. Uh, if, if, if you're seeing me talk about what I think is gonna happen, it's only because of what little experience I have. And as you saw, there's some consistencies and there's some also uh, wild card factors, some inconsistencies of uh, the bullet hitting and hitting, you know, something, the steel coupler of the, you know, the, the uh, seatbelt and, and then bouncing off. You know, there's things obviously like that. But anyway, so what practical applications can you draw from this? It, it seems like to me, uh, what I've been taught and what I've received that if you have to fight in a round of a vehicle these pillars are going to do a good job of helping you um, next time we're gonna look at what happens when vehicles hit doors and going door to door we've already seen kind of a little bit about glass um, but uh, I'll tell you right now bullets will just go straight through glass just uh, especially with this stuff that doesn't have very much of a curve to it it'll just go straight through from side to side one or two rounds will just break down the glass and then you can just start hammering through but it seems like there's like these fatal funnels um, and getting out of these fatal funnels so to speak and staying in line with these pillars so again I kind of want to remind everybody I'm not an expert in these things um, and I'm just here to provide and show you kind of like my findings and my opinions uh, but I, I've never been in combat, don't have any law enforcement experience, never been in a gunfight, things like that. So you got to just keep that in mind. Uh, I, I'm sure that there's experimentation that I could be doing or things that I'm not taking into account when we set these things up. But it seems pretty legit uh, of some conclusions, reasonable conclusions that we can draw from just simple testing like this. Uh, if you've got a vehicle, shoot them. Uh, and I'm sorry if you got a vehicle that you can afford to shoot shoot it up uh, and see and come to your own findings or go to other classes with these individuals that I've mentioned before and see what their findings is are and what their experiences are and I guarantee you that if you're if you go to a law enforcement a guy who teaches law enforcement you're gonna find that he's gonna use the vehicle a lot more often because he's got to do traffic stops they find themselves in vehicles things like that all the time because they have to be very mobile but if you go to like a special forces guy, he's gonna be like, wow, oh, these cars, they, 50 cows will shred right through these cars and things like that. They'll say that because they're coming from the paradigm of being in the military where a car is not very good cover. Uh, you know, or even, you know, they'll, death traps and they'll try to make their way from them. So you'll find those different paradigms out there and then find out, uh, you know, pros and cons from each way of thinking pros and cons from each paradigm and then develop your own thinking and your own strategy and your own training around shooting and around vehicles guys true this here hold fast stay the course